Okay, welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about the Russian Revolution and it's going to be legendary. This is a huge presentation and the Russian Revolution is very complicated and that's why I'm moving very fast. So, here is the flag of the Russian Revolution uh, uh, of Russia before the Russian Re Revolution and if you think about it, it's very close to the colors of the uh, modern day Russian flag, but uh, the modern day Russian flag does not have this yellow huge bird over here. And you have the Soviet Union flag, which came after the Russian Revolution. So, who was ruling the Russian people, uh, Russia? It was the Romanovs. And uh, we can see here, these are the last of the Romanovs. And to understand what happened, we have to go to this chart, where we will understand that uh, this sun, this is the sun of... Uh, oops, oops, something's happened. Um... This is the son of, uh, his name is Alex, and he is the son of the king, and he had hemophilia. And so this uh, guy in the background, uh, who we will talk about later, uh, supposedly cured him. And that was a problem for uh, the king because uh, his only son had hemophilia. So, uh, let's talk about the, uh, forget that. Okay, so Russia, the pre-revolution, it was the only true uh, autocracy, whatever that is, left in Europe. And that means there was no type of representative of political institution, no type of representative of people in government. And Nicholas II became Tsar, which is equivalent to dictator, leader, king, uh, prince of Russia in uh, 1884. He believed he was the absolute ruler, a ruler appoint, uh, anointed by God, which uh, also reminds us of uh, Nicholas the Fourth, uh, I believe, who uh, was in France, who also believed in the divine right of uh, kings, uh, uh, where he believed he was anointed by God, and he got his head chopped off. So we know where this is leading to. So there was the Russo-Japanese War in 1904, and Russia got defeated in the war, and this led to political instability. Okay, so, conditions deteriorated, revolution became possible, especially with Lenin's involvement, and we're going to talk about Lenin very soon. So Lenin, as you can see, Lenin is this guy over here. Uh, he is also, I believe, the man is speaking over here. So he had gra uh, gravitated towards the Social Democratic Workers' Party of George uh, Plek Plekhanov. They favored modern uh, modernization, capitalism, which the Tsars also favored as a measure to catch up with Western Europe, especially after the Cre uh, Crimean and Russo-Japanese War. We'll see how that change very soon. So the revolution of 1905. There was the rapid growth of disconnected working class discontented which uh, means unhappy you had the vast majority of workers concentrated in st petersburg and moscow and when you have uh, you know you have a wide uh, if you have many cities but you have one uh, one or two major cities that means that there is a bad economic system because life in in rural areas is horrible and that's why people have to move to cities we see this in egypt uh, most uh, uh, one fourth of 25% of the people live in Cairo, and 100% of the people live in 7% of the entire land in Egypt. This means this is a bad distribution of the nation's land. So there was little hope from the countryside. Impoverished peasants, like I said, you had populist movements of the 1870s and later had done little to improve their lot. So people were striking and stuff, but nothing really changed. So there was still not, no individual land ownership and there were uh, there was rural famine here's a picture of uh, I believe uh, St. Petersburg I'm not sure and here's also a picture of some Russians dying on the street and the government is living in a beautiful and the king is living in a beautiful wealthy palace so bloody Sunday and this is a very important date on January 22nd 1905 the Tsar's Winter Palace in St. Petersburg you had um, uh, uh, strikers, Russian people, they went to the Tsar, to uh, the Tsar's palace in St. Petersburg to uh, protest, and it was called Bloody Sunday because 
the guards shot all of them. They just shot them all. And that is why it's called Bloody Sunday. So conservative continues. Uh, conservatism continues. So in 1905 to 1970, the Tsar paid no attention to the Duma, which is the parliament. It was harassed, and political parties were suppressed. Only token land reform was passed. So as we can see, there was little land reform. So Nicholas was personally a very weak man. He became increasingly remote as a ruler. This is also like the king of France. We are seeing there are many... Uh, 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 there are many uh, uh, you know, common uh, common habits, common traits of both leaders, and we all know that both of them had a revolution uh, brought upon them. And there was numerous Sovi Soviets began to appear, uh, the, therefore, in the Duma. So, here's the wedding king. So. The revolution spreads. You uh, and World War One was the last straw, the straw that broke the camel's back, and the war revealed the the ineptitude and arrogance of the country's uh, aristocratic elite. The corrupt military leadership had no contempt for ordinary Russian people, so the millions of Russians died in World War One. We were living in a bad economic situation. There was no good leadership of the military, and the war was fought simply because of arrogance and imperialism and supporting and because of alliances, as I spoke before uh, in the video on World War One. So average peasants had very little invested in the war because they knew they were losing. World War One. Uh, it was ill-trained. Uh, ineffective officers poorly equipped Russians were not ready for war the result was mass desertions and two million casualties by 1915 that was before they pulled out of the war that was one year after the war had started and that was two years before the uh, the rush Russia pulled out of the war and we could already see a huge number of death deaths in the beginning so we know that this is very chaotic and this uh, and 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 wrong and and uh, and uh, you know what can I say? It's um, it's very sad. So the result was chaos and disintegration of the Russian army. You had, you know, I'm a general in the army. I'm gonna say I'm gonna attack here, and then this guy says, you know what? I'm gonna attack here. We don't have a no coordination, and so this creates quite chaos and disintegration of the Russian army. People said, you know what? I'm no longer fighting for Russia, so they disintegrate from the army. You had the Battle of Tannenberg, August 1914. You had a massive defeat at the hands of the Germans. We can see Russians here raising up their arms in World War One, and here are POW. Uh, prisoners of war, uh, Russian prisoners of war. So, Alexandra, the power behind the throne. Alexandra was the wife of the king. Uh, here is a picture of her. Even more blindly committed to uh, autocrac uh, auto uh, autocracy than her husband. She was under the influence of Rasputin, who is this man. Origins of Rasputin's power unknown. The scandal surrounding Rasputin served to discredit the monarchy. Basically, Rasputin was a psycho. He uh, literally was a psycho. He uh, claimed a lot of stuff, a lot of weird gypsy stuff. And because uh, his son, and they got him because his son was sick with hemophilia. When this guy was there, he got cured. And they started trusting him, especially Alexandra. So the collapse of the imperial government. N Nicholas left for the front in 1915. Uh, so the Nicholas, uh, Nicholas II, king of Russia, said, "You know what? I'm going to fight the war. I'm going to lead the war." So he left the palace. He left uh, for the front, and it left Alexandra and Ref Rasputin to throw the government into chaos. Alexandra and the other high government official accused them of treason, but nothing happened. Of course, here's another scary picture of Rasputin. Uh, Rasputin assassinated in December of 1916 and we're getting closer to the Russian Revolution so there was complete mismanagement of the wartime economy uh, production plummeted inflation and starvation were rampant and the cities were overflowing with refugees 
you had complete chaos, complete anarchy in the Russian um, land. They became a hotbed for political activism and this was ignited by serious food shortages in March 17th. That is all. These are all some of the reasons that led to the Russian Revolution. So the two revolutions of 1917. In this picture we could see Lenin. He's the one standing on the stage. The March Revolution. When March 2nd, 12th. And the November Revolution. Which is in uh, November 6th. The March Revolution. So origins. There were food riots and strikes. D the Duma declared itself a provisional government on March 12th. The Tsar ordered soldiers to intervene, but instead they joined the rebellion. The Tsar thus abdicated on March 17th, five days after the Duma declared itself a provisional government. So the Mensheviks, Alexander, uh, so the provisional government was headed by the Mensheviks. Alexander Kerensky headed the provisional government along with Prince Lvov. He was a very popular revolution. Kerensky favored gradual socialist reform, saw, saw the war effort as the number one priority. He wanted to continue the war. Now, uh, Alexander Kerensky would be, excuse me, this man over here. Okay. The Petrograd Soviets, and they were the leftists in St. Petersburg, uh, the leftists in St. Petersburg formed the Petrograd Soviets, which they claimed to be the legitimate government. So you had two, two, two people saying, you know what, we're the government, we should rule the people. So Germany was aware of the Russian situation and began to concentrate on the Western Front, which is France, instead of Russia because they would, they're aware that, you know, Russia's probably going to pull out of the war. So Germany even played a role in returning Lenin to Russia, the Petrograd Soviets, so he could push towards a revolution. Having been uh, been, gra uh, been granted safe passage, Lenin returned to Russia in April 17th, and the uh, and they supported this because Lenin wanted to uh, stop the war effort. Unlike uh, Kerensky, that is uh, part one of the Russian Revolution, and I will continue another video, hopefully, on the Russian Revolution. Thank you for watching this video.